Richard, thank you so much for joining us. Can you enlighten our viewers and listeners and say what's been happening overnight in relation to these attacks? What do we actually know? Thank you for having me. I mean, first of all, I will stress that uh, officially Israel is not making any comments on this. So this is mostly based on international sources. And so I would just urge everyone to just be a little bit cautious because at this moment in time, so soon after the event, uh, things, are, things are far from clear. But it appears there was a strike on an Air Force base um, in this, in the, close to the city of Isfahan in, in, in Iran. This was one of the bases in which launched this very uh, nasty and, uh, and, and quite unprecedented attack on early Sunday morning when we saw these 300 devices, both cruise and ballistic missiles, along with UAVs, launched on Israel. So I think this was just a small taster, a very small uh, retaliatory response um, to, the, to the point of fire that sent the message that Israel, if it was indeed Israel, has the capacity um, and the technology, the wherewithal, to strike inside Iran and knows exactly where these bases and these military targets are. Do you think Iran would be uh, justified at striking back following this attack? I think they should be very cautious indeed. I think we saw also the most significant aspect for me on Saturday night was that Israel's allies rallied, rallied to their defence, obviously including the, uh, the Royal Air Force alongside, alongside the US and other regional powers um, like Jordan, that there is a strong consensus within the region that Iran is a very dangerous threat both in terms of conventional weaponry and also in their desire ability to, to, uh, to attain nuclear military capability. And I think that's a threat not just for Israel, but for the wider world. Yeah, I, I mean, Richard, you haven't actually answered the question, so I'll put it, I'll put it to you again, because look, Iran would say, and I, I'm no fan of Iran, I think they're a very dangerous and uh, terrible uh, country, but Iran would say there was an attack on their consul uh, and one of their senior leaders was killed, and that was the justification for them attacking Israel. Israel has now allegedly, we understand, attacked Iran. Why should Iran... You know, this gets to the point of escalation. Why should, why should Iran not be justified now at striking back at Israel? This is the problem with this situation. It could so easily get out of hand. Surely Israel, as President Biden has said, should have taken the win in shooting down... Those, those drones and other missiles that were directed to it on the 13th uh, of this month, surely it should have taken the win and not responded in this way. Well, let me make, make a couple of points. First, first, first of all, um, I think that if there was a policy debate here in Israel that when after following the attack from Sunday morning, there is a necessity for Israel to, to uh, in order to bolster its deterrence and send a clearer message to Iran that a defensive... A defensive response is not enough, that it needs to inflict a, a price for these things. And that the question of what the price is and the calibration is, uh, is, is part of that policy dilemma here. But secondly, this didn't just begin on, uh, on, on, Sunday, on Sunday morning. Israel has been, in, in a sense, in a shadow war with Iran and with Iranian um, proxies in the region for almost a decade now, perhaps even further back, going back to the Iranian revolution when they laid out that Israel is the, the small state and sometimes it's the UK, sometimes it's Israel, and that they have as a revolu revolutionary a radical ideology the essence of kind of permanent revolution and consistently attacking. We've seen since October the 8th Iranian proxies in the north constantly on a daily basis um, targeting, targeting, uh, targeting Israeli uh, the north, the north of Israeli. There are still citizens there in the north that have been displaced from their homes for six months, and these attacks continue. So I think you have to widen the prism a little bit and understand that there are a range of responses that Iran and its proxies continues to attack Israel, and that's why Israel feels the need to respond. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that, that's that's really helpful. So, do you think it's likely that we will? we will see a further response. I mean, we've had a quite long debate about whether it's proportionate for Iran to respond. But do you, do you hope that this is the end, end of it in, in terms of this initial sort of direct conflict between Iran and Israel? You're right to say that there's been a significant war carried on through proxies uh, by Iran. But do you think this should be the end of it now? I mean, I, I'd be careful to, to, to assess the future. None of us are, none of us are prophets. Um, we, the, the hope is that this thing, this latest uh, 
retaliation, if it was Israel, will be the end of this current episode. Although, as I said at the beginning, there is real concern that the Iranians pose a, uh, a, a real threat to Israel. And I think Israel is best served by coordinating their responses with their allies in the region and their strong Western allies as well to have a unified and united front if Iran dares to, uh, to attack again. But in the meantime, as I said before, there is this constant threat from the other proxies, both from Syria, from Lebanon, from Iraq, from the Houthis in Yemen, from their attempts to infiltrate into the West Bank and set that alight as well. So sadly, unfortunately, this conflict is, is ongoing and we can only hope for, uh, for a reduction in violence for, for as long as possible. Richard, thank you very much for joining us here on Talk TV.